And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Back in 27 BC, the Roman Empire was run by Augustus. We're going back to that age, and we're going to be running for consul, which is a position that's only elected once a year there, and we're trying to get that. In order to get that, we need to have a lot of senators backing us, and we have to have a lot of properties and provinces under our own belt. See, once we do that, we'll be on Augustus's team. This is a game for Hurricane Games that's been recently nominated for Spiel des Jahres, which of course is the German Game of the Year award. Is it good enough to be nominated? Is it good enough to possibly win? Let's check it out and find out. In Augustus, you're trying to become the consul, and to do that, the person with the most points at the end of the game wins. And you get points by completing objectives, by controlling areas, and getting support from senators. So let's talk about this, how it works. This game is set up here, and we have it just me and the board, essentially. So these are my cards. At the beginning of the game, each person will get three uh, initial objectives that they will be working on. We'll talk about more of those in detail. You'll also get seven legions or people that you can actually put to work on your objectives. Now this is the main board here that uh, that is the tiles and cards that are put out. Um, these five cards here are available objectives that will be uh, ready for anybody to take as soon as someone completes one of their objectives. And over here we have different bonuses. So we have bonuses for wheat, um, and you know, set, first one to get three senators, the, you know, things like that. I'll talk about the bonuses a little bit more in a detail, but essentially, you have bonuses out here for everybody, and you have the basically the market or the available objectives. We have our people and our objectives. So let's talk about how a turn works. Now, on your turn, uh, some, one person is going to be the town crier, and they're going to start and they're going to pull out one of these tokens. Now, in this bag, there are multiple tokens. And as you can see from this little player's aid that everybody gets next to them, you can see which tokens are in the bag and how many are in the bag. For example, for a double sword, there's six of them, a shield, five, a chariot, four, catapult, three, what's called a standard metal, two, a dagger, one, and a, what's called a joker for two. So there's different amounts of each of the tokens in the bag. And so the person is going to draw the out of the bag and they're going to pull one of the tokens and they pull a shield token. So anybody that has a shield on any of their three objectives that they're working on can play, take one of their uh, legions and place it on either of them. So here I have a shield on this one and here I have two shields on this one. So uh, this one looks like it's easier to complete so maybe I'll put it on this one. And then the next player pulls out one of these tokens and they pull out, let's see, it's a catapult. So again, uh, I only have one place I can place a catapult, so I'm going to put it right there. And then this continues on and on, and here we have a double sword. And oh look, I can complete an objective. So I'm going to place this here, and in the rules it says that uh, uh, you basically yell Ave Caesar to say that you have completed an objective. Well now I can score this by removing my legions. I can take this and I can place it uh, somewhere that I know it's scored. In this case, uh, probably I'll put it over here so I know these are my scored ones. And I get my a choice as to which objective I would like to take. I can take any one of these five that are here. So I, you know, you look at them and you can see different things. Some of them have more points than less. Uh, some of them have, you know, some special powers that we'll talk about in a little bit. And maybe I take this one and I replace my completed objective with a new one. And then a fifth one comes back out into the available objectives. So the turn would complete and somebody else would take another token and this would continue on. So this is a chariot and ooh, I have lots of chariots here to choose from. And uh, maybe I, I kind of work over here on this guy right here. And this continues all the way until these tokens continue to come out until one of the jokers are pulled. This is what joker looks like. And a joker allows you, any, everybody to put one of their legions on any one of these. Now notice that when you're looking at your objectives, it's nice to, nicely laid out that from top to bottom, uh, it shows you the type of token that is that there is the most of, all the way down to the ones that there's the least of. So the shields are the most common, 
all the way down to the standards. For this objective, the standard is the least uh, common one out there. So you can look at your objectives and the ones that are on the bottom of those objectives are the harder ones to get. The ones at the top are the easier ones to get. So when I get the Joker, I can place it one anywhere. And in this case, it probably makes sense for me to maybe put it on the, the lowest one because those are the hardest ones to get. And then once the Joker's out and everybody scores their one Legion, after the Joker has come out, all the tokens go back in the bag, they get shuffled, and you continue. Let's talk a little bit about the bonuses and some of those powers that you get when you complete an objective. Here are the bonuses that are in the game. Let's start with these ones first. If you are the first player to complete objectives that have three senators, so three objectives each having one senator on them, you can grab this when you score that objective, and this would be two points for you at the end of the game. This one here is if you are the first one to uh, complete uh, three green province objectives, you get this in four points. If you are the first one to complete one of each color, which is Green, uh, green, purple, and orange provinces, and one senator, you get the six point bonus. If you're the first person to get three purple provinces completed, you're getting an eight point bonus. And if you're the uh, first one to get the three orange provinces completed, you get a 10 point bonus. Now those, once they're taken, they can never be taken back. Let's talk about two of the other ones. This one is wheat. If you notice, some of the cards, actually one of the ones that's in my objective, has both wheat and gold on it. That's a pretty powerful card. The first person to complete an objective, in this case with wheat, will take this wheat and they will hold this, uh, this reward. But the wheat and the gold are two uh, type of awards that can go back and forth to other players during the game. If I have one objective that has wheat on it and, it's, uh, and I have this, if anybody else completes one with wheat and ties me, they get to take this. And then if somebody else ties them with one, they get to take it from them. So it's always if the last person who actually ties the person that has it gets it. And if someone goes ahead, of course, they, they just keep it. Same with the gold. It's the other resource in the game where you take it when you're the first one there. And if anybody ties you with that many uh, objectives with gold on them, also gets to you know take it from you. So those are in flux the whole game. The last types of bonuses are you know are these special ones here. So as you can see here, we have two objectives completed and you would get two points here we have three for four points four for six points one two three four five for eight points and six for ten points now the game ends when the first person has completed seven objectives this is like a mad rush here when you complete a certain amount of objectives you can choose to take one of these awards but you can only take them once in the game so if it's getting towards the end of the game and someone's really ahead of me they have maybe six and i only have three when I complete my fourth uh, objective, it's probably the right time, if this is still here, to take this and score it because I know I probably won't get five uh, before the person scores seven and maybe somebody else has already taken this. So these are very timely awards where strategy comes in and plays as to when are you gonna take it? You know, if, I, if I'm gonna take the four now, I'm gonna gamble that I'm not gonna get anything better later in the game. Uh, if you're, let's say you've got your fifth one and then you have a decision to make. Do I pull this award now, or do I risk and gamble it to try to be the first person to get six of them, but if I don't, I can't go back and grab this. So they're very timely. Uh, so these things are really interesting. They can never get taken from you, and it's a time thing. You have to score it exactly when you have that many objectives done, and it's sort of jockeying for position to see where everybody else is. So there's a lot of uh, looking around at other players and some interaction trying to figure out what they're trying to do. I have these cards lined up to show you what some of the special powers are for each of these cards. I'm not going to show you all of them, but I'm just going to show you a few different ones to show to teach you, you know, some of the strategies in the game here. So when you complete any of these objectives, uh, obviously you always score the points at the end of the game, but sometimes you get an immediate effect of a special power. For example, this one means that I can take any two of my legions and put them on any two dagger spots on any of the objectives I'm working on. Uh, for example, this one is, as we talked about earlier, this would give you six points for every orange objective that you've completed. So if you get this early in the game, you might be going for orange for the rest of the game to really, uh, you know, get up on those points. If you complete this senator, you can place one of your guys on any, uh, any any piece on any objective that you're working on, any token. This one actually gives you two extra 
legions. So you start with seven, you'd actually get nine. If you get that early in the game, that could be really powerful. Some of them don't have any special powers, but this guy's worth 15 points. So he gives you a ton of points, but no special powers. This one gives you, if you can swap. So if a standard is pulled, you could use it as a dagger. Or if a dagger is pulled, you could use it as a standard. So there's a couple of them have these flip-flops. This guy's really powerful. He allows you to complete a second objective right away, no matter how many people you have on it. And there's another type like this where at the end of the game, for every standard icon you have on any of your completed objectives, you get three points with a max of 15. These ones can really add up quickly. So as you can see, there's lots of different strategies and things you can go for. Are you gonna go for the colors? Are you gonna go for the guys that just have a lot of points? Are you gonna go for, you know, getting extra guys? So there's always a strategy and it's always kind of like looking around to see what other people are doing. So essentially that's how the bonuses are played. This goes on until someone does seven objectives and then the game ends and you tally up your score. Well, I really like this game. Now I haven't played any of the other Spiel de Jar nominees, but I can say that this one definitely belongs is as that candidate. And it would not surprise me at all if this does take home the medal because this game is good. It's a really good game. Sure, yeah, it's a light filler game. You can play it in like, it says under 30 minutes. Almost all of our games are like less than 25 minutes, closer to 20 minutes. They're fast, it's easy to take out. You can teach it in five minutes to grandma or your parents or to any other Joe Schmo that comes over that doesn't know anything about board games. They can feel like they're playing something they know a lot because it is a little bit like bingo, but it's like glorified bingo with good strategy and it's not just luck. I like how there's, it's light enough that anybody can play it but yet, there's still times where you're really trying to figure out, okay, which one am I gonna go for? Which objective am I gonna go first? Is there a 13 or 16 pointer out there that if I complete this one first, I can go grab that? Or should I say, ah, no, I'm gonna stay back and, and do one of my higher ones now because there's gold out there. Someone's gonna grab that. I'll get it later and I get to steal that from him later. So there's a lot of, there's a decent amount of strategy here for, for considering this is a pretty light game, but it's still fun. It just, it gives you that feeling. It's, it's one of those things that it's, it's hard to explain the feeling you get when you play this. It feels elegant, it feels nice, it's, it, it's quick, but it's a lot of fun. So I would definitely recommend this game. I really loved it. Everybody we've played it with has loved it. We played it with multiple groups with all different player ranges. It works just as good with two as it did with three, four, five. It didn't matter. Even the two player game was good. That's what's crazy about this. I loved it. You've got to check it out. Absolutely try to get your hands on a copy of this. You won't be disappointed. If you're looking for a light filler that anybody can play, this is the game. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>